I see my, the whole my presentation, but uh, I guess it started. Um, yes, my my name is Nico de Jong, and uh, yes, from from your friends as well at uh, Itchycraft uh, in the Netherlands. Um, and my talk will be about the age of employee experience uh, because I think that we're entering that age, and uh, um, I think I'm not alone thinking that because. Uh, Microsoft is also making a lot of noise about uh, about employee experience in in particular. So uh, let's get uh, on with the presentation. Um, Itchycraft is an ISV, as I said, based in the Netherlands. And what we do is offer the ultimate employee experience by building a truly personal digital workspace. And that is something that you see on the left here inside Teams and also responsive inside uh, on a mobile phone. Um, as a company, we had our beginnings not very long ago, actually in 2018, uh, when we were doing a large project for an international bank in the Netherlands called the Rabobank. Um, they were making their move from uh, uh, on-premise uh, into the cloud and into modern. Um, and as many, many companies and maybe many of, of your clients as well, um, you know, they wanted to, to make the internet more interactive, have people engage more with the with the internet. Uh, and that was really the beginning of something that initially we called Itchycraft widgets, something that was added to SharePoint and that made SharePoint something that you could make personal and interactive. That was launched for 35,000 users um, for the Rabobank. And shortly after, uh, the idea was born to create a standalone product out of that and to bring that to other clients uh, in the Netherlands and actually around the globe. Um, and to really start or to continue crafting the employee experience. Um, so we've been around for a bit more than a year and expanding the, uh, the, the network internationally of partners. Uh, and actually now that uh, Microsoft FIFA has come on the scene, and specifically uh, FIFA Connections, uh, the first day that it was around, we've, uh, we've integrated this uh, sport, the Itchcraft board as we call it now, into FIFA Connections. And I'll, I'll show you that in the demo. Uh, as well. Um, a few things that I'll run through, a bit of the background to you know, where we stand today, the evolution of the digital workplace, uh, the challenges that we see and maybe we've seen for many years and that we think that we can solve by uh, utilizing our Itchycraft boards. Um, I'll show you a demo of the Itchycraft boards and then um, if you want, you can get your own because it's free to try. Um, but let's first talk a bit about the evolution of the digital workplace or workspace. I heard a bit of the discussion before this call and uh, you can mix those up, but we are always talking about uh, digital workplace over at Itchycraft. So I'm calling it the digital workplace. Um, and in that evolution, uh, what we hope to see, or what we hope to offer uh, all of the people using the digital workplace is more value. So more increasing employee value over time. Uh, but that has had a, a whole background and that has led us from, well, actually also the early beginnings of uh, uh, SharePoint in 2001 and onward, a, you know, first it was a portal, a place from where we would navigate to other places, hyperlinks onto other pages. Uh, that quickly turned into an internet when we added files to the mix and different sites um, and uh, the need uh, arose to, to customize the internet. Um, moving from classic to modern and many of those customizations ultimately led to internet in the box solutions. And around the same time, um, people had the idea that the, the internet, which was something quite stale, something that you would read almost as a newspaper, uh, needed some interaction. So there we saw the introduction of social internets in the hope that yeah, people would interact more with the internet and would find it more useful as well. Um, today though, we're sort of entering into a new phase. That's a phase of employee experience. And I think that's quite a new phase and, and especially in one respect is that many of the phases that we had before this were very technology driven. As new features were added to the platforms, we started utilizing them and then hoping that you know, the, uh, the, the, the users would be uh, as excited about that. And uh, as Microsoft did uh, acquisitions like Yammer, we hope to you know, fit Yammer into the mix and, and make things social as well uh, and hope that our users would like that as well, uh, but a lot of those things were very technology driven. 
things that were made possible that we hope that our users would adopt. Um, while now we're sort of entering into a phase that's, uh, in, in my eyes, a lot more user-driven, looking at what can we bring together and how can we bring that together in a useful way so that the user is really satisfied and the user is, is served. Um, and as I said in the beginning, it's something that Microsoft is also driving very much, especially now, you know, um, following the whole, whole pandemic and all of the FIFA communications, you see sort of the same communications going around. Um, but there are some challenges for that user. And if we look at our users, it's often employees because we sell our solution a lot to businesses. Um, as an employee, uh, you have many apps to get the full picture. You're still switching. Uh, and, and we, for consultants on the, on the call, you know, we're always figuring out how to position what for people to make it useful and to, to be that sort of digital workplace. But there's still many apps, not only Microsoft, but also outside that. You know, Salesforce, Workday, ServiceNow. Uh, you don't get there with just one app. All those apps have quite a different look. Uh, you know, although Fluent UI has been introduced and, uh, well, Yammer got that Fluent UI already. Um, it's, it's only progressing slowly. And then still, you need to know how to operate all of those different apps. And for a user, um, it's quite a challenge. And that's where a lot of user adoption and training gets introduced, not only by Microsoft, but by consultants. Uh, but it's, it is, it's a challenge for employees. Um, as an employee, you often need to think, and I have the same, uh, where did I see that? Where was that stored? Uh, where was that file or where was that message? Was it in Teams? Was it on Yammer? Maybe I had it in my WhatsApp. I don't remember anymore, but you have to look for that information. Um, and generally speaking, you cannot really organize things according to the way that you work. So you have to do it the way that the company thought you would use it or that Microsoft thought that uh, they would present it to you. Uh, and there's no really real way to change things. Um, and that in itself is, is leading us to, to switch between applications a lot. So the majority of us are switching six to 10 times per hour between applications to get all of the information to get our work done. Uh, and that's a lot of context switching. And there's different research showing different numbers. There's different numbers going around, but you can say we all together lose a lot of time in switching context every day between all of those different apps. Uh, similarly, companies are not sitting still. They also see this challenge and they want to address the challenge, uh, but they have their own, their own challenge. So, you know, some companies are managing hundreds of applications and a hundred different SharePoint sites or other uh, sources of information and how to target that information to the right personas. Who are the personas in the first place? I mean, that's something that we're still helping a lot of companies with, of course. Um, integration, it's something, it's not new. Uh, it's been around, it will be around for the next 10 years, but it's, it's complex to bring together all the information and apps into one, one location. Um, then to do customization or personalization, um, many people have tried, a lot of custom internet introduced this element, but generally speaking, it comes at a very, very high price to, to realize that. And then when we move from classic to modern, most of those customizations are lost and we have to do it all over again. Um, and finally, you know, the digital workplace, although we call it the digital workplace, it's not a single interface. It's not one place that I can tell people to go where they can find everything. And people go all over the place, basically. So um, the majority of us actually check our inbox, then our teams, and then maybe our Yammer all the time. And that was already bad when we were still sort of in the office, switching between all these different feeds. But at home, we're completely dependent on these digital sources. And a lot of people, oh, they perceive higher stress because of that. Um, if we thought that the internet was, an, was a solution to this, um, it, it's actually not. Uh, research among 190 companies, actually in the United States, but shows that, that half of the workforce never interacts with the internet. So, yeah, that's not really, that's just another application besides all of the applications that we have, a possible place where you can find something. Uh, but is that then relevant for my work now that I'm doing now at this moment? Maybe yes, probably not. Um, I already mentioned it. Uh, this is actually a graph of, of Microsoft. Um, as the, uh, the pandemic uh, uh, went on for more than a year now, uh, the workplace has become uh, excessively digital and remote. 
So, you know, we're a lot in meetings, emails, chats, so we're very dependent on, on all these uh, sources and all these uh, activities also. Uh, and I think the only good thing that comes out of this is that uh, a lot of the managers uh, and leaders in organizations that are, that are also put in their houses, they can sometimes realize how bad the digital workplace is because they have to work through that digital workplace now as well, uh, doing all of these things together with the rest of the employees. Um, so that's where Itchycraft and Itchycraft boards come in. Uh, it's an employee experience solution, a uh, solution that allows you to get personal wherever you work. And uh, we have our own Teams app, but we also work inside the Viva Connections app. Um, we work inside SharePoint, sections in SharePoint, uh, and we're responsive as well, so uh, on, on mobile phones uh, as well. Um, that puts us back at that employee experience wave and building up to employee value because, you know, what is then true employee value in, in the employee experience? Um, to us, it's something that's unified, one place where you can find everything that you need. It's, it's personal. You can change things around to your personal needs. Uh, it's relevant. What is brought to you is relevant. You can further make it relevant by changing things and, uh, you know, selecting the things that are, are important to you. Uh, and very important as well, and I think especially in comparison to uh, internet as we know it, it needs to be actionable. So you need to be able to do something with it, like people who live out of their inboxes, you know, they do that because they do things like reply and flag emails and so on. And that's very actionable. And uh, that is what Teams also has, but a lot of other elements of the, you know, the digital workspace, they don't have that element of being actionable. Uh, this is the perspective of, uh, of an employee. If we take that same perspective from a company, uh, there's a few other needs, but they're actually quite similar. Um, first of all, it needs to be compliant. Uh, well, our solution was born out of a bank, so we were, let's say, born compliant. Um, but a lot of companies are, are also looking to make things tailored. So you can make it very personal, but still, if you can give people a starting point, if you can work with personas and give these personas something to work off, because not everybody wants to tailor their complete workplace. You know, if you give them that starting point, a, a template, that works really well. Um, besides being born out of a bank, we were also sort of cloud first, API first. Uh, when, when we built the solution, the Microsoft Graph was there and being rolled out further and further. And we were utilizing the Microsoft Graph a lot and other APIs as well. And as such, we can establish a very small footprint. Um, and finally, we're extensible. We're actually extensible by design. Uh, because of all of the widgets, so you'll see that in the demo as well. Uh, they're based on, on templates that we use ourselves, human templates, and that our partners use and customers use uh, to actually create new widgets and extend, extend our product. Um, so maybe on to the demo, uh, and I'll show you how all of this, all of this works. Um, let me see where I can go first. Uh, yeah, let's go here. Um, this is John, and uh, John is inside Microsoft Teams. Uh, and we see, uh, first of all, that he's using the, the Connections app, and uh, he gets his nice global navigation and sites here uh, on the left. Uh, and he has his own board here. And with the Connections app, of course, we see some of the navigation uh, here at the top on the page itself. Um, some of the most important things come up in this message box that shows him some unread messages, a lot in this demo, um, some to-do tasks and meetings he has upcoming. Uh, but below that, what we see is various widgets. We see some widgets for company news, actually taking news from SharePoint and showing us the news here. We, sh we see an app launcher, uh, an inbox with uh, emails that, uh, that John has search tasks, upcoming meetings, and save for later. Um, and if we look at the, the widget here on the top, we also see this little lock. And we can actually see that uh, uh, this, this is a locked widget. Also a bit of a description here. I uh, cannot be moved or resized uh, because that's actually what I can do with the other, the other widgets around here. I can move them around. I can also resize them to my needs. Uh, and this widget doesn't allow me to do that. This widget just allows me to go through some of the news that's being rolled up, and I can go in some of those uh, news items and 
while I stay in the same environment, read the things that, uh, that I want to read, maybe I want to save uh, something for later and uh, go through the news like, like that. Um, this is a locked widget, but I, I still get to do a few things. And those few things, they sit here under the cog wheel. So for this particular widget, uh, there's some essential sites. Uh, co the company has determined I need to follow these sites in the news published there. Uh, I have some like sites, so those are optional sites, but I can also go through and you know find other sites uh, in my environment to, to start and follow. I believe there's a, a benefit site maybe in here. Well, maybe not here, but you get the point. You can add different sites and determine a bit of the content that's inside this locked widget here. Uh, we had a quick look here at the at the inbox. It doesn't have uh, various uh, various settings, um, but let's move on to the people search. Beyond some some settings here, uh, we can also find that there's some interactivity around widgets. So uh, let's say I go in, I try to find people from sales within Itchycraft, finding me and Rainier. Uh, if I open up those profiles, I actually get to see a lot more information on that person uh, right from the same same place here. So um, I can go out and email them. I can go and chat to them. I can see where they sit in the organization, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I have some quick filters to, to search by name or job titles, to find the right people inside the organization. And of course, I see their presence at the moment uh, in, right from my, from my dashboard. Uh, and the same interactivity you can find across uh, many of these uh, uh, these widgets. So if I start ticking off some tasks here that I have servicing from to do or from planner, uh, you can see that I can do that right here. You can also see that the tasks are changing at the top. So you know as I tick tick off my my tasks, it's actually reducing the tasks that I uh, I have in my list there. And as such, it's uh, it's it's actionable. Um, here in my app launcher, maybe I want to give this a little bit less space uh, and find my upcoming meetings there, start moving these things around. And I'd like to see my upcoming meetings a little bit bigger so I can see what I have today, what I have tomorrow, uh, how much time I have between meetings to maybe do some other activities. Uh, but again, here, find the files that are presented here or see that I have a Teams meeting that I can join directly from, from this interface. So this brings together a lot of different widgets for me that my company has uh, provisioned to me. Um, and you can already see that there's also uh, the opportunity to add other widgets in here. Um, but let me take you to SharePoint as well from behind here. So here we see the same thing again inside uh, uh, with the, the, the nice uh, uh, the SharePoint app here on the left finding all of the, the, uh, the navigation. Uh, and uh, let's say that uh, uh, you know I want to, to place another few widgets on this board right here. Um, let's go in and take some news uh, from external feeds. So RSS web part, and I'll put that on the page. And it starts presenting some news. Now, all of these widgets, they all have a, a smart way to show themselves. So without uh, the user having to choose what this looks like, uh, this is the default view for this size. But if I change that size, you get a different default view. If I increase it again, you see that with every type of you know, size, but you get sort of an optimal view to, to watch all of your, your feeds or all of your apps or what have, what have you inside this, uh, inside this widget. Um, here I can also go in and add feeds. Um, all of these feeds have been provisioned by my organization. So I can go and, and start adding in these different feeds and they'll start mixing in uh, with all of the information I have. You can see already here the feed changing as the RSS uh, changes. Uh, I can go on and uh, you know find more uh, things to add, different uh, reports, but let's say that Actually, what I want to do is to create not only a landing page, but I also want to create a place where I can see many of these reports because this, yeah, this doesn't offer me enough uh, space here to, to watch all of my reports. Then I have the ability to 
to start creating multiple boards. So here's an example of some other widgets on, on two boards. Um, actually, a widget that was developed and, and, and given to us recently um, by, uh, uh, by Red Bull, a customer of us as well, showing a world clock. Uh, we're, we're seeing some, some Power BI reports here. Uh, I think what we see here as well is a, a Power App. I think there's no Power App in this demo, but this is a bit of a, a Power App showing the embedding possibility. And as you see, I'm resizing that app. And then well, the only thing that app does is actually show me the different uh, uh, resolutions that the uh, that uh, you know the, the widget has at the moment. But it's more uh, for demonstration. But uh, let's say that I am going to make that uh, reporting page right here, then I'll probably want to go in and I want to change the title to, to reporting. I can then go in and start adding different reports. Now, maybe you didn't see it uh, when I clicked on it first, but there's different categories. So I can actually go in and see uh, what are the reports that are available to me. And maybe I want to get those basic finance reports onto here. Uh, probably want to to increase that, maybe push away those other reports, and then go and put these things maybe up here. Oops, I clicked it, um, and you know organize my workspace like this. Um, if I do have an embed right here, what I can do again, like on most of the widgets, I get to select the content, and this content can be targeted at me. So the reports that I see here, I see because I'm part of a particular group. Uh, I can go in and add some other reports relevant to me. Uh, I can also change the order in which these reports appear. Uh, the same goes for any other sources that you sort of combine into a uh, into a uh, widget. Uh, I can go and save that. Uh, it will take a bit of loading, and then it gives me this view through all of my reports. Again, something that sizes with changes that you make to the dashboard uh, itself. Uh, now, this is a, uh, a starting point that was given to me. Uh, I can also quickly show you what John would see when he first logs on. Um, so in this case, John is entering his digital workplace for the first time and being greeted and being shown a bit of, well, let's say, a mock-up of uh, what he might see on this page. And he's asked to get started, so he goes through and he gets all of these provisions because he's part of a particular audience. Um, talking about audience, everything on this page, so the page itself as a whole, the widgets, but also the content, all of that is audience targetable. So you can use audiences to bring those boards and board templates to users, uh, but also the widgets that they get to consume, but also the content. But I'll show you that a bit later in the uh, in the admin section as well. Um, as John is just configuring the board. Uh, he gets a bit of explanation, uh, how to add these widgets, move widgets, well, things that you already know, of course, uh, because you saw me do these things, resize them. Uh, the fact that there's locked widgets, that the organization can then push particular widgets, uh, that it can go out and configure, and also that there's a few more options around widgets, like deleting them and so on, and that he can add multiple boards if he runs out of space. Um, so this is a way that he can start and, and sort of build out his experience. Um, if I um, make a switch to, uh, to SharePoint, so if we show this same thing in SharePoint, um, then I should have another profile here called Yoni. Um, and here we actually see a different way of starting the board, the first, the initial experience. So John was part of a particular group, uh, a Microsoft group or a security group, and that's why he got this board provision. That's how we set it up in the backend. Here, though, uh, we want to give the user an option to choose a certain board or persona. So uh, although not very realistic that you're either part of the developer or HR team, but maybe you're part of pre-sales and post-sales or roles that are a lot closer to each other. Uh, but let's say that Yoni is part of the HR team, and from here, she can go and get things started. Um, she'll go through the same uh, onboarding experience, of course, but 
uh, I wanted to show you the, the different uh, uh, option of delivering the template, uh, but then also the fact that now we're actually seeing this inside SharePoint. So this has become a, uh, uh, a section inside SharePoint, a horizontal one, uh, giving a level of personalization. And again, all of the, you know, the sizing, et cetera, works here fluently. Uh, but you do get to show other content from, uh, from across SharePoint here. Uh, one thing that's also appearing here in this demo is that let's say that your page was not containing this web part at the top. You're also able to, to use a quick launch on different pages. So again, the board, but then inside a quick launch within, uh, within uh, SharePoint. Uh, and I'll not, I'll not show you the board again, but um, I'll just move to uh, a different way of showing exactly the same board, but this, this time on the home site template. So probably very recognizable for you all with this uh, vertical bar on the right. Um, and again, uh, Donnie's been greeted and is able to sort of go through and change all of the things inside this bar on the side. On the side. Um, so this is just going through different, different you know, uh, ways to display the board. Um, but by far the most, the most traction we can see, uh, well, inside, inside Microsoft Teams. Uh, and inside FIFA connections at the moment. Um, if we go to what this looks like on the back end, uh, and Patrick, please tell me if I'm running out of time or anything like that. Then that's okay. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. No problem. Then uh, you can see that the back end actually appears right inside the same site collection, inside the same experience. And the back end allows us to do various settings. Uh, as a, a site owner of the, the site collection here. Uh, so we get to, to pick a background image uh, to, to style it. Uh, we can uh, allow settings like multiple ports or not. Uh, for large screen sizes, we can enable six columns for those that have that kind of resolution. And we can go through with a little CSS editor and actually do some styling across all of the, of the widgets. And then for the widgets themselves, uh, there's two options there. Here it's uh, mentioned at the top. As I said, the, the widgets are part of an extensibility story. Uh, and in that, you can get widgets that we are releasing, doing uh, re uh, releases monthly. Uh, but you can develop your own and register your own as well. And that's simply creating the solution, creating the manifest, very similar basically to Teams apps, and uh, loading that manifest into your environment. And that will also stick, I mean, that will stay inside your environment. It doesn't go to us. Um, all of this, all of this, what you're seeing is running inside the Microsoft tenant and actually uh, using a hidden list to store settings and leaving the data inside the, the, the tenant itself uh, using the, uh, the Microsoft Graph extensively for most of these, uh, uh, these widgets. Uh, but as such, none of the data actually travels outside the, the tenant. And uh, also, if you register your particular widgets, it's actually only on that uh, particular uh, instance that you're registering those. Um, you can see uh, you know, various widgets uh, represented here. Uh, and these widgets have a couple of settings. Uh, you can uh, attribute them to a certain category. Uh, and you can create those categories yourself as well. So I'll not select to, to attribute to, uh, to uh, Cat here, um, you get to add different titles to, in this case, the uh, the, uh, the Power BI widget, uh, giving it different names, also uh, ensuring different translations. Uh, so there's several languages supported. French is also one of them. Most of the main Dutch or the main European languages uh, are supported. Um, and what you can see is that as you're configuring the widget or instances of the widget, you can decide to target particular audiences so that they get to see it, but you can also lock that uh, widget to uh, particular boards so that they have to, to see it right there. Uh, again, a bit of extra styling is possible inside the widget uh, definition, and that's how you sort of go through and uh, set up all of these, these different widgets. Um, widgets ultimately come together in in boards, so you can make your own boards for you know your HR professional, uh, give it different titles, uh, and then decide from all of your configured apps what needs to show 
on that particular board and start targeting targeting those those different boards. Um, uh, as I said, maybe nice to show very quickly is that all of these widgets they work with their individual permissions, and this is where we can sort of see all these widgets being granted permissions to to the Microsoft Graph. Um, and this is something actually when you roll out the solution, it's a, uh, uh, a solution that can be found in the App Source or in the SharePoint Store. Uh, you install it as a SharePoint Framework solution in the catalog. Once that's done, you can you can add it to uh, to Teams. You can add to SharePoint, um, and in that process, in the onboarding of the administrator, you'll be asked to to uh, to uh, approve all of these permissions, uh, and from there, you're actually uh, actually good good to go. So that sort of um, yeah runs up the whole uh, demonstration, um, and uh, yeah I I hope I could show you that uh, with what we're offering right here, um, there is that one starting point that gets people through their day, uh, a starting point that that can, they can personalize and really make their own with all of the things that they you know find relevant. Um, I hope you could see that the uh, the the you know the training is pretty it's always pretty intuitive. So changing things and selecting things um, is something that uh, uh, yeah sort of uh, comes natural to most people. Uh, and with a bit of an introduction at the beginning, uh, people uh, are shown the way to 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 utilize this as a dashboard. Uh, and ultimately, as an employee, you know they can be on top of of their work uh, across all of their devices either on desktop or mobile. Uh, similarly, uh, the company experience uh, is, is one where they get to target those boards, target different personas and content, lock that content, or allow the individual freedom, depending on what they prefer. Um, one thing I haven't shown you is that we have a, a widget that allows embedding. So you can have an embed code from Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you find an embed code. Uh, also for easy integration right inside the board. Uh, but from there, we also have that human template with which you can build your own widgets. And for those that are interested, I, I have one or two slides showing that. Uh, so if you have questions about that, feel free to ask. Um, it offers that single interface that brings everything together. Um, and all of the data remains inside, you know, inside the tenant so that we ensure that compliance that uh, a lot of our customers, of course, really, really appreciate. Um, that brings me to the end. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Very clear presentation. Um, and uh, maybe if somebody has some question, you can open the mic and speak. Yes, please. En, en français aussi, hein, si vous avez des questions en français ou des remarques, euh, n'hésitez pas. Euh. Oui. Mm. I have a question for you, Nico, um, yes. just to start uh, <laughs> the discussion. Um, do you do you think it's a, it's a product that that needs some um, some training or some explanation for end user, or is it uh, provided as is uh, usually? Well, what we do is um, uh, with partners, we ensure that customers do a introduction. Because this is something that's new, um, you know. At one point, you'll through policies in Teams, you'll start pushing this to this app, uh, maybe the Connections app or our own app to to certain users. Um, and of course, they need to be uh, informed that this change is coming. Um, what you can see though is that a lot of the uh, customers are um, first running with a couple of widgets. So if you take, for instance, the inbox and the agenda. Those are really good widgets to get people out of Outlook and into yeah. Teams, or maybe into SharePoint, but especially into Teams, and it solves a problem for them. If you then start adding the, the tasks, that solves another problem, not having to go to Planner or to, to do to see those things. And it's also something that sort of grows with the organization. But as soon as people understand, actually, when they see the concept of the board, they understand it immediately. Yeah, yes. It's very, very intuitive. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, and I have, I have another um, not not easy question, but I like to 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 ask it. Uh, can you give us in any ways uh, an idea of the price or the pricing model, things like that? Yeah, uh, we can actually be uh, very transparent about that. Let me uh, uh, switch to my presentation here and onto some of the pricing. So this uh, this is actually also out on the on the website. Okay. Uh, running three different uh, tiers. There's a bit of a fixed fee annually for uh, updates, maintenance, support. Uh, and then we have a, a fee per user per year. And as you see uh, in the middle tier, that would come down to 25 cents per user per month. So um, yeah, I would say really a nice uh, uh, cherry on top of the, uh, the cake. Microsoft yeah. 65 cake and now a uh, a Fiva cake, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that that will be my my last question. Um, how how do you see uh, integration or uh, uh, how do you see the, the the connection with Viva? Do you think it's it's uh, even more uh, feature needed or it can it can cohabit with Viva? How do you see that? Um, as you saw in the in, in the beginning in the other demo, where actually the day that it became general available, at least the FIFA connections, that's where we uh, uh, integrated the board in FIFA connections, uh, and then uh, from that point onward, we also tackled the problem of navigation or global navigation because our boards didn't have any specific form of navigation, and especially if you were in Teams, you could not really navigate anywhere else. But uh, Microsoft actually has solved that for us. If you then look a little bit further, um, we're quite actively working with uh, learning providers um, and uh, you know also around the topic of knowledge and wikis and integrating other other line of business applications. But especially on that learning aspect, you can see that what Microsoft is trying to do with Viva Learning, it's very logical because if you take the user perspective and you try to create that, uh, that one digital workplace, you want to have your training there. You want to see what kind of things you can inscribe to. Uh, maybe, maybe the employer also wants to remind you that you have certain training waiting for you that you need to complete. So yeah, actually having that training in there or having the topics in there as knowledge, uh, it only comes natural, but it's, it's not enough. I mean, with FIVA, Microsoft is not offering enough because people also still use things like Salesforce, uh, where do you get all of your low code solutions in Power Apps? You know, is that a natural fit today with Viva? Not really, not necessarily, but we want to make that natural fit because you know those low code solutions offer you self service, and that's also something that you want to have on maybe on a separate board, a self service board. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, pas d'autres questions. Uh, I have a question maybe for yes. you, uh, Nico. Uh, quickly, uh, just in terms of, um, you know, de deployment or integration, uh, is it a, like a, a plug and play like solution? Or do, do you, do, let's say I'm interested in, in this solution, do we have to yeah. plan extra cost or time uh, for this to be running in my uh, environment? Or, or is no. it quite quick? No, not necessarily. As I said, it's a, a SharePoint framework solution. Everything that you see, the whole board actually runs inside a, uh, a web part. So the installation is 10 minutes. You have to go through and, and, and approve everything. Uh, for us, the big part is, the big question is, do you have teams set up or security groups? And do those teams or security groups represent personas in the organization? Yeah, now, exactly. yeah, if, if you're a very small organization, you might only have one persona, but quickly you know you get different personas and want to maybe serve them a bit differently so then you get into analyzing different personas and that's where you get you know, to create board templates and determine widgets that are loaded you probably want to apply some branding as well um, and determine some sources like which rss feeds i'm going to give which reports will i give um, so there's a few days of, of, of configuration and aligning and then as i said before on the question of patrick um, you will, of course, or the organization, actually, we try to enable the organization, they have to introduce this as a, mm -hmm. a different, a new way of working. So that, that, that goes without saying, I guess. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, really interesting. Thank you. So if you, you know, if you do want to uh, actually get hands on, uh, on the website, there's also a, a little install instruction. Must be very familiar to everybody who's uh, installed a SharePoint framework solution before in the app catalog. Um, and what is also very interesting to note for those that have not seen it, but um, actually uh, Microsoft has brought out a, a FIVA a tenant, a, a customer experience tenant uh, that you can get as a, a Microsoft partner. Uh, that's pre-filled with uh, FIVA Topics, uh, Syntax, and also the FIVA Connections app. So if we you know, try to inspire people to, to install today and they cannot do it on their own tenant, then uh, as a Microsoft partner, maybe you can grab uh, the FIVA one. Uh, it's only uh, provisioned from North America. So make sure that you select North America from the dropdown. Uh, you can only find it there. And then completely at the bottom, you find a special uh, FIFA completely populated with users and teams and 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 also with topics, for instance. And you can see uh, uh, FIFA topics working and FIFA connections is is enabled there as well. Okay, thank you very much. I stopped the recording.